Hello Weathering fans and welcome to our 15th Race for Terra Community Spotlight. In today's video you will have the chance to see not one but four unique projects. At first sight, it looks like they're fairly homogenous, because all of them are models of real-world military vehicles. However, nothing could be further from the truth, as you will see. We last saw one of Rick's models back in November when he completed an amazing King Cobra truck in 135th scale. A few months ago I kind of cajoled Rick into trying a bolt action tank, and in particular, one from Rubicon Models, which I know makes some great little tanks. He and Niklas, whose work you will see later, both submitted entries to a little group build taking place in our Discord. Theoretically, this was for bolt action T-34 tanks, but both of them went for something quite different from the usual Soviet paint scheme. Rick wanted to represent a Lebanese tank from the Lebanese Civil War, belonging to the Nasserist al Mubiratun party. By the way, this was a secular, socialist party and it's not to be confused with the terrorist group by the same name. I've never known Rick to build any kit out of the box and this couldn't be an exception, even at this scale. In this case, he added 0.2mm wires for the antenna and the grab rails and he also modified the wheels. The awesome posters that you will see he scanned from a book by AK Interactive and printed on decal paper himself. In his usual self-deprecating manner, Rick tells us that he struggled with the diffuse edge camo and that the weathering hit his ineptitude passably well enough. Well Rick, I'm sorry but I have to disagree with you on all counts. The camo looks very good to me, I love the rust, dirt and engine oil effects and the posters are just the icing on the cake. This is the fourth spotlight entry from Niklas after a Star Wars Legion land speeder which he dubbed his Space Toyota. <laughs> if you've seen his work before, this will not surprise you so much. I've never seen a model from him which sticks to the bog standard. Niklas always moves away from convention and heterodoxy. So it is that what you have before is not a normal T-34. Oh no, this is actually what the Germans called a Beutepanzer, a captured tank in other words. So what's so special about that you ask? Well, just look at the camo. There were loads of Beutepanzer in the Eastern Front, but in the Africa Corps? <laughs> yeah, that's what Niklas has gone for, and I dare say that the heavily chipped sandblasted finish on his tank really conveys that story. As he put it himself, I didn't find any proof that didn't happen, so alternative history, here I come. <laughs> so if you're watching this and you're a Warhammer guy, who said military models have to be all the same, eh? Both Rick and Niklas were only painting wargaming models before they were infected with the Race for Terra bug. But I digress. Going back to the T-34, the pictures don't do it justice, but the tank has a very worn out Dak or DAK three-tone camel over the usual Soviet green finish. For the weathering, Niklas used a combination of oils, pigments and enamel mod effects. To conclude, Niklas tells us that he's working on a base for it and that he wonders, maybe should have a dinosaur on it? <laughs> or just a fuel station? The vision is not as clear as for the tank, he says. Well, be that as it may, I hope that this serves as inspiration to others. Have fun making something unique, guys. This is Stefan's sixth spotlight entry to date. His previous one was a squad of World Eaters commanders for Warhammer 30k back in November. So, an entirely different genre altogether. Like Rick and Niklas, Stefan has had a lot of fun exploring the world of military scale models this year. A few months ago, Stefan convinced them to do a T-55 body build and this is his own entry in it. Stefan explains that he deliberately chose to go all out on this project, trying to push himself, hone his skills and also to learn new ones. For instance, this was the first time that he tried oil paint rendering or OPR, accumulated pigments, camo netting or the use of bricks and debris on the model. For these new techniques or products, he took inspiration from Mike Rinaldi, one of the leading authorities in the world of armor modeling. Stefan explains that this project took him over three months to complete which should not come as a surprise given the levels of attention to detail that are evident here. If you've ever painted and weathered a tank of any sort, you will know that something like this is hardly a weekend project. 
In terms of the lessons that he learned during this extended project, Stefan explains that the main one was to trust his intuition. This is something that has been mentioned by other Spotlight entrants in the past, like Lucas a few months ago, and I agree that when it comes to weathering, trusting the process is incredibly important. Or in other words, trust the force. And so we're back with Rick and his own T55, which is a Tamiya kit to which he added a myriad aftermarket components such as metal tracks, a metal barrel, and two resin kits, including engine covers, turret hatches, a mantlet cover, a tank commander, a water container, and a prayer mat. Not content with all that, Rick also made new grab rails from wire. So not exactly a simple and easy out-of-the-box build, huh? In any case, what I think really tells Rick apart from other modelers is the attention that he pays to references and narrative or history as applicable. He explains that this vehicle replicates one of the old Soviet tanks which the Northern Alliance restored in 2001 using some CIA cash. He adds, and I quote, The new coat of CIA funded paint is beginning to chip and peel and the previous Soviet green is beginning to show, as well as some rust thanks to the harsh Afghan winter that set in. Rick would also like to thank Stefan for renewing his interest in Syrian stuff. He confesses that he's since sunk hundreds on heaps of new books. Most importantly, however, Rick explains that he's really enjoyed working alongside Nick and Stefan, and that the best thing was spending evenings in our Discord nerding out on tank nonsense and spurring one another onwards. Well, I couldn't agree more, Rick, and long may it remain so. So guys, I hope that you've enjoyed tonight's spotlight, which I was very tempted to call a tale of four tanks. As I announced in my previous video, I'm closing my Patreon page and transitioning to YouTube memberships instead. You know, the join button that you see in some channels. So once again, I would like to thank everyone who has supported me on Patreon since October 2020. Each and every one of you have made a big difference to me personally, but also, as you can see here, you have helped me make our Discord a true community where we can all learn from each other. Thank you all, and remember, keep it up and weather it out.